The following video is sponsored by Vend-Co.com. If you are looking for a side hustle or full-time income, invest in vending machines. Vend-Co.com has the latest in vending equipment for the lowest price and they have financing. So be your own boss. Check out their link in the description below. It really helps the channel. Thanks guys. Hi guys, this is Norm from the Board Game Museum and today I'm going to be comparing two electronic Monopoly games. Monopoly Ultimate Banking and Monopoly Super Electronic Banking. Now both of these games have an electronic unit and they take care of everything for you. All the cards will have a little strip on them and you're going to basically be placing the strip onto the unit and it could be a property card, it could be a rent card, it could be anything. Uh, it basically takes care of all of those things. Now there are some differences in both of these games and I'm going to go ahead and go over them. I'll start with some of the similarities. Uh, there is auctioning in both of these versions. Both of these versions do not have mortgaging. Both of these versions do not have railroads. They have been replaced by other spaces, which I will talk about. And both of them have the same amount of players. There are four tokens in each of the games, so you'll just be able to choose between one of those four. Both of them have what are called flight or location spaces. The location space is on ultimate banking. The flight is on super electronic banking. They're named differently, but they both do the same thing. If you land on it, if you pay $100, you'll be able to fly to any property on the board. So here are some of the differences. The number of properties is different. The ultimate banking has all 28 of the properties, whereas the super electronic version has just 16. Um, the super electronic version has uh, two properties per color set. Um, you've seen those probably in some of those stripped down versions of Monopoly. It's same there. Uh, with ultimate banking, it's the standard amount of properties. Rewards. This is when the character that you choose will be able to uh, get something if uh, an event occurs. Uh, this is not true of ultimate banking. It is basic play. With the super electronic banking, uh, you will get rewarded depending on who you are. For example, if you are the dog, you will get a $50 bonus anytime you purchase a property of a different color. Houses and hotels. Ultimate banking has houses. Super electronic banking doesn't have any of those things. Uh, and the way the house works on ultimate banking is different than in standard monopoly. You're going to purchase a house uh, anytime you have the property according to the rules, but the house is going to be moving up and down different levels. If it's at level one, you'll get a certain amount of rent. If it's all the way up to level five, you get a lot more rent. Uh, but there's going to be different events going on in the game that's going to make the house move up and down. With the super electronic version, you're only going to be getting rent either by one property or if you have both of the colors in that property set, you will receive double the rent. As far as the cards go, uh, Monopoly Ultimate Banking has what are called event cards, and then the Super Electron version has the chance cards. Both of the cards work the same way. You pick it up and you follow what it says, but they both have different texts on them. Uh, the way the game ends in both of these versions is also different. In Ultimate Banking, once somebody goes bankrupt, that is going to go ahead and end the game and everybody will go ahead and count up all of their money. In Super Electronic Banking, the game is going to end once the last property has been purchased. And when that happens, uh, you'll just simply follow the instructions and everybody once again will go ahead and count up all of their earnings and whoever has the most is going to win. Force Trading. Ultimate Banking does not have this, but Super Electronic Banking does. And what forced trading is, is it just simply means that you'll have the opportunity to force one of your opponents to trade a property with you, so long as it's not a part of a complete set. And you can do this in Super Electronic Banking. The number of dice is also different. Ultimate Banking has two dice, whereas Super Electronic Banking has only one die. Um, and that brings me to how you get out of jail. As you know, if you roll doubles three times, you know, you'll get sent to jail. That's true in ultimate banking, not true in super electronic banking. So getting out of jail is a little bit different. Um, in the original game, if you roll doubles within three turns, you'll get out of jail that way. In super electronic banking, uh, if you roll a six on the single die, you'll be able to get out of jail that way. Otherwise, it's pretty much the same. When it comes to trading properties, you cannot trade properties in Ultimate Banking, but you can in Super Electronic Banking. So folks, those are all of the differences in both of the games. Uh, as far as comparing the games, I think the Ultimate Banking plays more like the standard Monopoly game. It has all of the properties, but it plays way differently as well because it doesn't have hotels and it just has the one house and the events that move around. With Super Electronic Monopoly, it's more stripped down. They have fewer properties, and the game, I believe, goes by a lot faster because once the last property is purchased, that's going to end the game. Whereas in Ultimate Banking Monopoly, you have to wait until somebody goes bankrupt. But both of them play faster than the original Monopoly, and I like both of them. So guys, there you go. I hope you all have a blessed day. Take care and keep on gaming.